Locked On Fantasy, your daily NFL fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I am Kate Majuk. You can follow me on Twitter at FFBallBlast. And as always, I am joined by my co-host, Marcus Mosier. Follow him on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Give the show a follow on Twitter at Lockdown Dynasty. Hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening, but also don't forget to check out our brand spanking new YouTube channel. Give us those thumbs up. Uh, check out the episodes. We really, really, it, it means a lot to us. Helps others find the show. Hit that subscribe so you never miss an episode. Uh, and don't forget to leave those five-star reviews. Marcus, happy Monday. We survived another week. We did. It was a fun week of football. The one o'clock games were were not fantastic. I don't believe we had a single game where the, the margin of victory was fewer than 10 points. The afternoon games were better. The night game was, I don't want to say good. It was something. It was certainly something, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a weird week of football so far, Kate. It was a very weird week of football. We have lots of injuries to talk about. Unfortunately, that's always our, our show opener, but hopefully we can pick up the mood as the show goes on. Mm. Um, probably the most notable injury that uh, we might have to be concerned about, the quarterback two on the week, Dak Prescott, uh, on the last play of the Dallas Cowboys game, uh, one of the like most clutch last second touchdowns he could have ever imagined to CeeDee Lamb. Uh, on that play, Dak suffered a calf uh, strain. Don't really know what what we have to be concerned about yet. Uh, sounds like he's getting an MRI. But after a stellar QB2 performance, 444 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, uh, we have to worry about Dak again. Uh, what is What are your thoughts? Uh, any any Dallas insider information that you can squeeze our way? So I don't want to turn this into the Locked On Cowboys podcast, but you can check that out on YouTube if you want to. How's that for a shameless <laughs> plug? plug. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have to talk about how Dak Prescott threw for 443 yards and the Cowboys had the most yards ever against the Bill Belichick defense. That's not what we're talking about here, Kate. Um, uh, humble brag. Yeah, humble brag. Uh, I think he's fine. Uh, he was wearing a boot to his press conference after the game. He said he could have kept playing if if the game was going on. The Cowboys do have a bye week next week, and that's really nice. It gives them some time to just stay off of it. I, I'm not all that concerned because Dak is about as tough as it gets. He's going to find a way to be productive, even with without the running ability, the mobility. I think he'll be all right. Uh, we have another quarterback injury, unfortunately. Uh, Baker Mayfield, who's been dealing with uh, a shoulder injury, suffered another shoulder dislocation, mm. which is just uh, really gross for Baker Mayfield. That's got to be so, so painful. Um, but, I mean, now you have the run game banged up. You have Kareem Hunt, uh, who was carted off in the second half. Right calf strain. It was a non-contact injury, uh, but I think we can expect an absence there. Nick Chubb injured. So what do you do when you have a quarterback with a uh, a loose shoulder? Uh, we'll, we'll call it loose because it just seems to be falling out mm. every time he gets uh, a rough hit. But um, I mean, at what point it, does does he get knocked out of the game? Or do you think he's just a tough dude that's going to play through this? This one really concerns me, Kate, because he was not playing well before the injury. Uh, he finished the game with 234 passing yards and like 70 of them came on the Hail Mary right at halftime. This is a Cleveland team that only put up seven other points in this game against the Car you know, uh, Arizona defense that was decimated by injuries and COVID stuff. So I'm starting to get concerned about Baker because he just doesn't seem confident as confident as he did last year. The offense just isn't clicking in the same way. Um, They've got a they've got a Thursday night game this week against Denver with probably both their running backs tough. out, both their offensive tackles out. Actually, their top three offensive tackles. I am a little bit worried about Baker that he's just never going to be right all season long. It, it's definitely concerning, and I mean, if you had a healthy run game, if you had a healthy offensive line, um, you know they're they're a very heavily run focused team to begin mm -hmm. with, but. 
um, as we said, banged up into this game. And I think we saw a little bit of that because, I mean, Baker Mayfield, as of late, has been playing pretty, uh, pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. Another injury, Giants wide receiver, Kadarius Toney. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was ruled out pretty quickly with an ankle injury. Not loving that. We just had his big, uh, big time breakout game in week five. Had 10 catches, 189 yards, uh, was absolutely bonkers. Added a rush for seven yards. Uh, but there was uh, there was concern about the ankle heading into this game. You know, ruled out that quickly. I have to imagine uh, that he might miss some time. But, uh, I mean, hopefully the Giants get the rest of their wide receivers back. And this one's frustrating because he was going to be, or he was going to have a monster day. So on the first drive of the game, three catches for 36 yards. It was pretty clear. Like they were just going to feed him all game long. And then six he got total hurt. offensive snaps, six offensive snaps. And he got three touches. Like, I think he's the wide receiver one on this team going forward. It's just how long until we see him again, Kate, because this offense just cannot, they cannot function without him on the field. I've got a feeling that the Giants might they might shut Tony down for a while to make sure that he's healthy and not going to re-aggravate this multiple times over the season. So I would, if you're a fantasy owner of Kadarius Tony, I would plan to be without him for the next two or three games at least. Last but not least, we have running back Antonio Gibson for the Washington football team. Uh, he uh, it, it came out last week that he has got a stress fracture in his knee mm-hmm. or in his uh, shin. Excuse me. Um, I, I mean, I can't imagine this is a good thing. He was like in and out of the game and uh, it, it came out after the game that he was really struggling with that shin injury. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine that he is going to last an entire season with this kind of injury. It just takes one wrong hit. I would imagine to aggravate that, that fracture and, and exacerbate that even further. Um, what is your take on Antonio Gibson? If you are an Antonio Gibson manager in your dynasty leagues, are you looking to go and grab that handcuff uh, and, and maybe trade for JD McKissick now before we see him really, really leave yeah, our lineup? This one's really frustrating because Gibson even before the injury, wasn't getting a lot of work in the passing game. He has just two targets in every game, except for this week where he had three targets. So you need him to be uber efficient on the ground to have you know, a, a high-end RB2. Unfortunately, because of this injury, it's kind of zapped some of his quickness. Uh, he averaged 4.4 yards per carry this week, uh, three last week. It's just not a great situation now. And I do think, yeah, if you can get J.D. McKissick without giving up a ton, I do think McKissick is going to have a lot of value because he's obviously somebody they trust in the passing game. He is a functional runner and probably is going to have a few starts coming up because I, I agree with you, Kate. I just don't see him as a guy that's going to to last. But what's, what's difficult here is if you're the J.D. McKissick m- m- owner, why are you trading him? Because he has a ton of value, right? Like yesterday, eight for 45 on the ground, eight for 65 as a receiver. So you're getting like 15 PPR points just from him in the passing game. And if you are a competitive team, I think that's somebody that you go out and get, even if you're, if you're not the Antonio Gibson owner. So it's just a bad situation all around for Gibson. Um, But McKissick, I think is going to have some strong standalone value all season long. Oh, especially in those those full PPR formats. I forgot one more injury we should note. Tyree Kill, uh, he's been managing a quad injury. Um, mm. He was out for a portion of yesterday's game, like ended up coming back, but um, definitely something to keep an eye on because this was suffered last week, uh, Monday Night Football against the Bills. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, just make sure we're we're all good and, and set there. Hopefully we don't see... Um, any further exacerbation there. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. He came back in the game, finished with nine for 76 and a touchdown. Uh, He looks just fine. Uh, All right, let's take a quick break, Kate, so we can tell you guys about DirecTV. Uh, I was using DirecTV all day yesterday because I have three different games on, trying to follow just about everything. Uh, And I did that because of DirecTV stream. It brings you live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together 
with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That is directtv.com. All right, Kate, should we talk about some of the uh, the running backs that got starts this week and um, which ones performed well? We probably should start with Darrell Williams, right? Absolutely crushed it. Uh, just yikes. Um, you know, I, I said last week I wouldn't, I wouldn't be overly excited about having him there just because of the fact that uh, we didn't really see CEH uh, do a, a ton mm-hmm. of stuff uh, in terms of his fantasy production. But, I mean, Daryl Williams, uh, one of you a week in week six. Yes, thank you. I have him in a lot of leagues. Uh, so he <laughs> ended up with 89 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, saw four targets in the passing game. Uh, I wonder Clyde Edwards Hilaire is probably thinking what in the world? Come on now. To be fair, uh, he wasn't overly efficient with his carries. I'm going to okay. give him that 21 carries, 62 yards on the ground. Again, not overly efficient, but, but I made those but two like, touchdowns. They yes. Were, he's getting the goal clutch. line work, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's exactly what you want to see. And if you spent a bunch of your fab dollars on him, him getting 24 touches in this game, especially because it was, a pretty close game for most of it. Like I know the final score was 31 to 13, but that game was like legitimately close going into the fourth quarter. So I think for at least the next two weeks, because remember Clyde Edwards Hilaire is on the injured reserve list. Uh, I think he's going to have a lot of value. I need to mention one other, one other guy really quickly, not a, not a running back, but Ricky seals Jones. Is this uh, this is a guy that you had on promotion commotion last week, correct? It is. Uh, and I, I think he did not disappoint. Uh, looks fantastic. And he looks like he really is just filling in for that Logan Thomas role. So I think he's he's pretty much a lock for that kind of production on a weekly basis, as long as uh, as long as Logan Thomas is still sidelined with that calf injury. All right, let's get to another running back, Khalil Herbert. Uh, this one is very interesting for a bunch of different reasons, Kate, but against the Packers, 19 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown. He also had two for 15 in the passing game. He also had another long run, a touchdown run taken back because of a holding call, which is kind of ticky tack in this one. But my takeaway is Khalil Herbert's good. And that could be very, very concerning if you're a David Montgomery dynasty owner just waiting for him to come back. I think that's definitely, definitely something to be concerned of. And uh, actually I have to go back here. Excuse me. Uh, on the Logan Thomas injury, it's a calf or a, I keep saying calf injuries. I have calves on the mind for some godforsaken reason. He has a hamstring injury. So yes. my apologies there. Um, but Khalil Herbert, he absolutely looked like a baller. I was a huge fan of Khalil Herbert coming out of college. And I thought as soon as he had the opportunity, he was going to show out. He absolutely did. Um, he kind of looked like he just slotted right into that David Montgomery mm-hmm. role. Um, I think this could actually be a really interesting situation. We saw Damian Williams out this week uh, just due to COVID, but he was sort of the um, the token backup there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we weren't really looking. We were looking at Khalil Herbert as like the fourth guy on the roster. But uh, I, I, I do think that if you see uh, Damian Williams return this week, I think this is still the Khalil Herbert show. And I'm I'm still fine fine playing with him. I agree. I think Khalil Herbert's just good. Uh, one more running back I want to mention, uh, or young running back, Alex Collins. I guess he's not young. He's been around forever. Uh, oh, he's Alex been Collins, around the block. He's been around the block. 20 carries for 101 yards and a touchdown against Pittsburgh. Actually had to come out of this game uh, due to, I believe, a hip injury. I think he's going to be okay. But pretty good. Like He's gotten a ton of work for the Seahawks over the last couple of weeks. 10 carries in week four, 15 carries in week five. 20 carries in week six. So that means we're going to see what 25 here against the saints <laughs> on Monday night football, but Poor Alex Matt. Collins with Chris Carson <laughs> on the IR list. Is he somebody that has RB two value for the next month or so? Absolutely. Um, and I think we've seen this from Alex Collins just in general throughout his career. Um, he's been, he's been productive uh, when he gets touches. I don't, I'm, still kind of puzzled because I feel like uh, we should have seen him keep uh, a like an RB or, you know, maybe not an RB one role, but um, he kind of disappeared there for a while, but yeah. I always thought he was a really solid backup. Um, he performed pretty well with the Baltimore Ravens having a, a resurgence, but I mean, this is a really good fit because we know the Seattle Seahawks want to run the football. I don't think they want to keep putting uh, Geno Smith in these game winning situations where he's no. the guy 
that we need uh, to step up. I think they're going to put the the ball in Alex Collins's hands a lot. Uh, I, I apologize. I got to mention one more running back, James Robinson. Like we know he's good. It's just well, Urban finally, Urban Meyer finally commit to him. He did in uh, in week six. No carries for Carlos Hyde. Thank goodness. 17 for 73 on the ground and a touchdown for James Robinson. Also added three for 28 in the passing game. So you got over your 100 yards. You got over a touchdown. He's good. I don't know why Jacksonville just doesn't fully embrace him. Maybe they are starting to, but it was nice to see him have another strong game. I would agree there. And I like, I, I mean, I keep going back to the fact that like they had – uh, I mean, James Robinson, he just looks like an absolute stud, but he's a capable receiver. Mm -hmm. He just looks so good on the ground. And I keep going back to what were they thinking with Travis Etienne? I know. And I know all of Twitter agrees with me because they saw the posts all day long, folks. Uh, everybody's thinking the same thing. Like, what would his value be worth if they hadn't picked Travis Etienne? Because he'd be a, a really solid RB1 in Dynasty. But I mean, it's it's such a bummer because I don't think we'll we'll see that come to fruition anytime soon. Just just considering the um, you know the fact that we we still have Travis Etienne just sort of waiting, uh, and you know he's like a, a ball hawk. Like he's he's going to be ready to get in there uh, as soon as he's fully healthy to do so. But I mean, James Robinson's such a stud. Um, he's an RB one weekly, um, and Urban Meyer like you just need to keep feeding him and feeding him and feeding him and the rest will come. You know who the, the Jaguars should have drafted Rashad Bateman who played his first game of his NFL hey. career on Sunday, uh, six targets in this game, which actually led the, the Ravens actually it was tied with Mark Andrews. Now the production, not great four for 29, uh, no touchdowns, but just to see him on the field, getting that target share is good. I, I think we're going to see obviously much, much bigger days from him. So, just wanted to mention Rashad Bateman. Uh, we're going to come back, Kate. We're going to talk about some guys that played really well, uh, some non-rookies and some non-running backs. Uh, but before we do that, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. We are back and better than ever as all eyes are turned to the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new up updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Also, I want to tell you guys about Built Bar. Bill Bar, best tasting protein bar out there. You guys know it. Real chocolate, amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar with no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com right now and see all the new bars they have available. Use promo code LOCKEDON for a discount at the checkout counter. All right, Kate, let's talk uh, about one running back here that I want to mention. Jonathan Taylor. I know a lot of people were, were getting worried about Jonathan Taylor. Uh, after a, a slower start to the year, but he's been phenomenal over the last three games. I'm going to read you his, his PPR points. Week four against the Dolphins, 21.4. Against the Ravens, 30, uh, 31.9. Against the Texans, 29.8. One of my favorite things to do on the show is to surprise you and ask you, would you rather question? So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this one. How many running backs would you take over Jonathan Taylor for the rest of the season? I'll, I'll give you some of the names. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Okay. Dalvin Cook or Jonathan Taylor? Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Derek Henry or Jonathan Taylor? Derek Henry. I agree with you there. Alvin Kamara or Jonathan Taylor? Jonathan Taylor. Austin Eckler? Oh. Ooh, that one's. Eckler that had one's a rough close. game yesterday. Only nine and a half points. Um, but before that, I'm, I'm just going to read you his games 11.7, 22.5, 22.7, 30.5, 30.9. I, uh, in a full PPR, I'll roll with Eckler. Uh, otherwise, I will roll with Jonathan Taylor. And here's one I think is fascinating Najee Harris or Jonathan Taylor? Mm. 
Oh, that you can't do this to me, Mark. You cannot. You can't. I mean, you That's, only have a no. Najee jersey directly behind you right now, so <laughs> literally in in eyesight of everybody. Um, like, I don't want to be uh, biased. I think you probably have to say Jonathan Taylor. Um, he's just he's on uh, just an absolutely unbeatable. Uh, he's he's the guy. Um, what does so make Najee me nervous, Harris, though? Yeah, what makes me nervous a little bit about Taylor is he had three touches in the first half against the Texans. Three. Like, for whatever reason, Frank Wright and the Colts just don't give him 20 touches a game, and they should because he's unbelievable. But it sounds like, Kate, at the very worst, top five for Taylor the rest of the season, maybe even top three. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Anybody else that that had a good game on Sunday that you want to mention before we move on to some guys that disappointed Let's talk about Daryl Henderson. Mm. My man, he is absolutely balling out. Um, you know, we when Cam Akers went down with this injury, we said, you know, uh, well, Dar- Daryl Henderson, you know, I've always been high on Daryl Henderson, mm-hmm. but the general consensus was that uh, Daryl Henderson wasn't going to be a shoe in and just fit into that role. Uh, he looks fantastic uh, over 100 yards from scrimmage yesterday two touchdowns. I mean, he, he does look like a monster of a stud. And I think we do have to be concerned about Cam Akers dynasty value, just with how well Henderson's being, uh, you know, utilized, how well he's performing. Um, even when you have Cam Akers fully healthy, mm-hmm. I think we should expect both of these guys to split a decent amount of work. I just saw a trade of one of my leagues. Uh, it actually happened on Saturday. It was two first round picks for, uh, Darrell Henderson and Cam Akers. Hmm. So basically, you're locking up you're locking up Henderson for this year, which is, I think, what probably at worst a low end RB one now, and then you're hoping Akers comes back next year and kind of wins that job. It's interesting. I think it's a little bit of an overpay, but just kind of shows I think you it's how a little high bit of an overpay. Those. Yes, just because you're capping your upside there uh, when it comes to future production uh, in the season to come. But I mean, I think. Whoever's touching the ball is going to be productive here. Uh, all right, let's get to some guys that disappointed on Sunday. Oh, this one makes me really, really sad, Kate. Tyler Lockett. Um, womp, womp. <laughs> uh, Tyler Lockett, two for 35 in this game on seven targets. Tyler Lockett, I really think, had a chance to be like a top five or six receiver this year in, in, in fantasy, but with Russell Wilson now out for at least, it sounds like, the next month, if not more. I just, is he somebody you still have to start or no? I don't think he's a must start. I mean, even with Russell Wilson, he's a guy that has a very, very, very high ceiling, Mm -hmm. but he has a pretty low floor in general, even with Russell Wilson, even when he's getting a target share. um, I mean, it lasts, last three weeks before uh, the Monday or before the Sunday night football game, uh, 31 yards, 24 yards, 57 yards. Um, that's that's not must start material. Now, um, I'll say if you are looking for, um, you know, if you're making your start sit decisions, if I'm ever in a position where I need I need somebody to put up uh, 100 yards and two touchdowns or 178 yards and one mm-hmm. touchdown like that guy's Tyler Lockett. He's a very high upside receiver. Um, but just because of his floor, I think uh, you have to consider that he is not the must start that we, we want him to be right now. I agree. It's, it's concerning. Um, man, it's frustrating because I um, lock it in a bunch of leagues, but uh, I think he'll eventually figure it out. I do think this Seahawks passing offense will get better. Pittsburgh's a tough matchup for anybody. Especially on attacking attack. Um, all right. There's some other guys who, who else do you want to talk about from this week that, uh, disappointed. Terry McLaurin, four for twenty-eight. We know he was dealing with a little bit of an injury. Uh, what about Lavisca Chanel? He was six for fifty-four, but had like two or three really bad drops. Um, anybody else from this week that disappointed that you want to mention? Uh, I I do think we need to like go back and hit on Lavisca just one more time here because I uh, I I don't know how much leeway uh, we give. LaVisca Chanel. I mean, he's he's had a pretty solid floor outside of week two um, where he had negative receiving yards. Um, outside of that, he's actually been 
pretty, pretty solid overall. Um, I mean, do you consider, what do you, what do you consider him for the rest of season? Uh, wide receiver three? No, no, that's too high. I mean, like a, I would say like a high end wide receiver four because like Kate last week, he had one reception. And in this game, he really wasn't doing anything until the very end of the game and got a lot of his receiving yards on basically the last offensive play. I don't think he's somebody that you have to you have to start anymore. I, I really I don't. I think he goes to your bench. He's just far too inconsistent. I would agree there. And then one more name I want to mention. Uh, I want to talk about Justin Jefferson because mm. I feel like Adam Thielen keeps stealing the show. Justin Jefferson was uh, a top five dynasty wide receiver heading into this season. Um, but we have we've seen, uh, you know, the touchdowns continue to go Adam Thielen's way. Um, Justin Jefferson does have the edge in terms of yardage, has three more catches on the season. Uh, what do you what do you make of these two? Um, any, uh, you know, any trepidation uh, at all from this Adam Thielen production? Uh, and is this maybe a buy window for for Justin Jefferson? I uh, mean, he's listen, been perfectly I, productive, but he oh, hasn't been that lock for top five. Right. I'm not worried about Justin Jeff Jefferson. He really hasn't had a bad game yet. His worst game of the season came in week one where he was five for 71, 12 and a half PPR points. He's fine. He just hasn't had the monster game yet with 120 yards and two touchdowns. It's coming. They've got some games coming up against some bad secondaries. Uh, I think he'll be okay. But if, if an owner is panicking or they want to swap him out with a receiver that you have ranked lower personally, I think it's a good guy to go out and target. Um, one more, Kate. And this one makes me really sad because I loved watching this guy at his peak, Odell Beckham. Oh. I, it's just not going to happen in Cleveland, is it? I, I mean, he actually had no. a decent day yesterday, five for 79 on eight targets, dropped a key fourth down. But do you know the last time he's went over 90 receiving yards for this team, Kate, was in October of 2019. It's been a Yikes. long time since we've seen him have even really a good game. So – with Baker being banged up, with Odell being banged up, we saw him holding his shoulder yesterday. I just think the days of us hoping that he's going to get back to a wide receiver one status are completely over. Now we're just hoping that he's a wide receiver two, and I'm not even sure if that's ever going to happen again either. Yeah, he's not a guy I'm banking on in any any sort of uh, threshold. If if you can sell him off of this 79 performance, uh, 79 yard performance. Uh, do it, but I, I don't think the buyer's market is going to be too strong. Unfortunately, I'm a huge Odell Beckham fan. I think uh, I'm I'm very hopeful that uh, he's not long for the Browns because I would like to see him move on, get another opportunity with another mm -hmm. team. Because it just like it, I don't I don't think Odell Beckham and and Baker Mayfield they they don't seem to have that chemistry. Um, anytime we've seen Baker Mayfield force the issue, he makes a lot of mistakes. Uh, so this is just not not a match made in heaven for me. Last seven games for Odell Beckham. Are you ready? This is so sad. 21 receptions for 280 yards and zero touchdowns. Ooh, that's worse than I would have thought. Yikes. 41 receiving yards per game, no touchdowns. Yikes. Uh, I still believe that Odell is in there, by the way. I still believe he's like in, uh, he's, he's still Odell. I do let, believe that. Let, let, let me rephrase this question. Um, let's say he gets dealt at the trade deadline. Where's the best possible spot for him to land to, to maximize his fantasy value? Oh, that is a great, great question. Um, I think it might be interesting to send him to the Patriots. Mm. Um, uh, he sort of instantly takes on that role as a wide receiver one. Um, Mac Jones is a quarterback that's super accurate. Um, and we know he's capable of throwing downfield. Uh, they haven't really opened up the playbook for him in that direction yet, but um, like, I, I think time will, time will bring it uh, there eventually. Um, I think Odell and Mac Jones could be a really fun stack. I'm just saying. You know which team has a lot of injuries at receiver right now that could use a boost to their passing game? How about the New York Giants? Oof. But you know what? You're already locked in. Uh, oh, gosh. I know, I'm, just, I'm kind of teasing. Oh, I'm my, kind of teasing. Oh, my gosh. No, you you almost had me there. Uh, no, how about the I, uh, Buccaneers? They, they could use another guy, right? 
<laughs> yeah, they are short on receiver. Um, other other places that he signed though, I mean Detroit Lions, yikes. Uh, How about the Saints? That uh, that's an interesting one. Now I know they're paying Michael Thomas a bunch, but oh, that was pretty yeah. cheap actually. And we'll see if Michael Thomas comes back. But they really even him and Michael Thomas would be a fun fit together. More importantly, him and James yeah, and, would be a lot of fun together. Let's just imagine let's just the that. attitudes, though. I feel like that would that locker room would just be <laughs> would just be a disaster. Be the moodiest uh, NFL locker room in football. I would be here for it. Uh, all right, <laughs> that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you can download the show wherever you get your podcasts: Google Podcasts, Apple Play, uh, or Google Play, Apple Google. I don't know wherever you get your shows. Go go Home get place. them there. Google Play. There you go. Uh, Check out our show on YouTube. You can follow Kate at FF Ball Blast. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you next time.